Today, we're going to be talking very basic about how to set up a Zoom meeting. Taylor here at Financial Potion, where video is your financial potion. And to never miss out on a video, please make sure you subscribe to our channel and then click on that bell so you're notified every Friday at 5 p.m. Arizona time that a new video has been uploaded. For one-to-one -one training or just to support our content, please click above and connect with us on our Patreon page. Many people have been using Zoom throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. However, there are some people who are a little slower adapters or maybe they're just starting to use Zoom on their own. And so when you are setting up a Zoom meeting, you have a few options. When you go to your account, you can then say to schedule a meeting. You'll see that the very first thing here is to choose a topic. And that's the topic that the other person's gonna see when you invite them to the meeting. And so make sure that it's something you'd want the fellow person to see. Description, as you see here, does say optional, and I really never put anything in the description. Then you have your date, that's obvious. Go ahead and click on the calendar and then choose the date in which your event is. You then have times, and there's only half hour increments. And so whenever I have a meeting at, let's say 2.15, I'll put a start time at two o'clock. But really, you can start your meetings at any time. It doesn't quite matter if you are exact with the time here. You do wanna make sure you do have the correct time zone and the duration of time. And if you're in a free account, you only have 45 minutes. So keep that in mind. Versus if you pay for such an account like a pro account, then you can go one, two, all the way up to 24 consecutive hours. Is it a recurring meeting? You can click that. Is registration required? If registration is required, you can create a registration page right here on the Zoom platform. Generate an ID, create a passcode. That's always important. You wanna make sure that all of your meetings have a passcode. Add a waiting room. This is also a security feature, so that way people aren't just going to be going into your meetings. You can then see who's in the waiting room and then accept them. When you are going to start your meeting, do you wanna already have your video on and do you wanna already make it so participants have their videos on? Typically, I start with off just because I wanna be able to make sure everyone's prepared to put their videos on before it turns on. I do allow both telephone and computer audio. It's good to give people the option. Um, sometimes people's computers or internet speed isn't that great, and so they need to be able to use their phone to access. Uh, these are other meeting options. So allow participants to join any time. I very rarely click that just because I want to be able to have the control of the start time and when I'm allowing people to come in. If you're having a panel conversation where you really don't want to have participants uh, interrupting on accident, then mute participants upon entry is a really good item to select. Breakout rooms pre-assigned. If you already know how you're gonna break out your breakout rooms, you can do that right here. However, I typically wait until the meeting to see who actually arrives. Automatically record meeting is really good to click on if you're someone who tends to forget to click on record. And I always will record to the local computer so that way I know it processes right into my computer and I can start working with those files right away. Enable additional data center regions for this meeting. To be completely honest, I have no idea what that means and I've never done it. <laughs> Approve or block entry from users of specific countries or regions. If for whatever reason you needed to block that, you could click on there and then select either the regions that you're allowing users to come through or that you're going to block. Lastly, alternative hosts. If you give people alternative hosts, you're actually like inviting them to your Zoom account and it could potentially mess up their own Zoom account. And so if you're planning on having multiple hosts, I would advise having those hosts and yourself log in at least 15 minutes to a half hour before your event time then make them co-host so they have all the capabilities that a regular host would, but it's not gonna interrupt their personal Zoom account. I hope this helps you better set up your Zoom meetings. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.